Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, um yeah, I, I want to know why why didn't we have the energy source selector in the final way? Okay, I would love that. And then uh, uh, one more question, Mr. Robin. Um, you see uh, the, the capacitors, the one the one we used to put out the uh, energy and the voltage instabilities. Um, we have we have one we have one on the um, on the hundred, sorry, on the VCC. That is okay, okay.
prayer in the evening. So I I will plead if you can throw some light on the I see no like brief <laughs> in brief like uh, because I was trying to follow back I was <laughs> Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, so please, uh, um, please, I want to know, like, um, so where, where can I watch this video that you recorded? Let's route this thing, right? Okay. Okay, then please. Okay, okay, sir. So then immediately after. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, okay, so with the um, with the indicator led you, um, I want to know is it is it uh, with the whole board or in parallel? Because um, I'm thinking that if um, voltage passes through, we will have some voltage loss in there. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, please, my question is, uh, yesterday when you were doing the description and the footprint, the footprint and the description, you were copying from the net. Does it mean that when we are also doing our ways, we should copy from the net or we should do Whoa, OBS Studio disconnected. Wow. Okay, so if nothing, then let's continue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think I've enjoyed the session. I've enjoyed it. Okay, so let's continue. Our passive and active elements, and we have. Uh, successfully classified resistors as passive. Okay, let's continue with the notes on resistors. Now, resistors is to take note the component is called a resistor, its quality or its characteristic or property is resistance. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now, resistance is measured in ohm. When we talk of an ohm, uh, it's just um. An ohm is the resistance between two points such that when one volt is applied across these two points, a current of one amp will move. That is how we define one ohm. Is that okay? However, you see, for instance, if I am working with little values like 300 ohm, 200 ohm, and that other, I can just say 200 ohm, 50 ohm, 36 ohm. But if you are working with things like 3,300 ohms, or oh, 1 million ohms, then uh, mentioning this becomes inconvenient, right? So there is a way of uh, nicely, there is a way we, we nicely say these things, and we do so by attaching something called prefixes, by attaching something called prefixes to them. Is that okay? So with resistors, you will like you will mostly hear of things like kilo, mega, giga. Okay, so for instance, uh, one thousand ohm. Somebody, uh, engineers or people, circuit designers will mostly like to call it one kilo or one k for short. Is that okay? So we have a k for kilo, capital M for mega, capital G for giga. Okay. Then we, we can also have lower values. In fact, when you are working with shunt resistors, um, you can have values like 0 0.01 ohms, okay? 
So things like that, we can use a milli prefix on them to make them look nicer. Okay, so uh, if we have something like 3,300 ohms, we could call it 3.3 kilo ohm or 3.3 K. Is that right? So when we start the PCD, you hear me say calling up resistors according to their value and uh, a prefix. Okay, so something like 10K, 2K, 1K. Okay, so usually the rule of thumb is any value between 0 to 1,000, just call it out in full because they, they don't require any prefix, right? So maybe 860 ohm, 620 ohm, 470 ohm, just that, right? But anything above, then you start introducing the appropriate word, prefix, okay? So uh, 1 million, 1 million ohm will become 1 mega ohm or 1 meg for short. Then if you have something like 0 0.01 ohm, that would become, I think, 10 milli ohm, okay? And uh, that makes everything look uh, nicer and uh, easy to mention. Is that okay? Now, there, if there, there are different types of resistors out there. And uh, based on the type of resistor and even its form factor, the way their values are coded or printed on them may differ. Now, common uh, true hole components, and I'll talk about true hole components probably today or tomorrow. Uh, you resistors uh, have color codes, okay? So those of you who have used resistors before can see that they come in bands and these bands, colors of bands, actually, if you know how to decode them, that tells you the value of the resistance, okay? Some, val some uh, resistors can also have numeric coding. Okay, so on some resistors, you see something like 402. So 402 would be 4 zero times 10 raised to the power two okay which is like 4k is that okay so if you know how to read them you can always find out but i'm not going to go into that details i just do your attention so that you can learn more about that so if you are interested please get a new material on resistor color codes and learn more okay now when we started i asked about what do you know uh, what do you know uh, uh, about resistors, what they are used for? And a lot of you said something that was very interesting. Okay, that's good. So generally, we put, remember, from the beginning, I said that materials have an inherent ability to resist the flow of current, right? So generally, generally, uh, Generally, uh, what do we call it? I was I was looking at something. Sorry. Generally, re we need resistors in the circuit because we want. You see, electronics are about controlling the flow of current, right? It's about control. Electronics is always about control. So one of the ways we control current is also by determining how much of it should move and where. Is that okay? So having a means to tell how much of current should move that is what resistors are used for okay so we use them to reduce the amount of resistance uh, of current that's supposed to flow now take note i don't know anywhere any situation where resistors are used to increase okay their primary action is to reduce okay to oppose the flow okay now with this in mind okay with this in mind because of this property, resistors can be used to divide current or divide voltage. And we shall look at that very soon, okay? Resistors uh, can be used for these two things, either dividing current or dividing voltage. Now, commonly, when we use it to divide voltage, we call it a voltage divider. And I know most of you have heard of it. You, you probably heard of voltage divider or potential divider. They actually represent the same thing. Is that okay? Now, anytime we connect resistors in series, and by series arrangement, I mean the the leg of one to the leg of another and that other, okay, in a linear form, something like that, then we have a series arrangement. Anytime we have that kind of series arrangement, what happens is that any voltage that we apply across the two resistors will be divided 
according to the ratio of their resistances. Okay, so that is what makes it possible to use resistors as voltage dividers. Then we can also use resistors as current dividers, okay? But in this case, we have to connect them in parallel to each other. So if I have two resistors, I tie two legs together and the other legs together, okay? Then I've created what we call a parallel circuit, okay? In that case, the same voltage will drop across the two, the same voltage will drop across the two, but then, but then, uh, what do you call it? The current that will flow through them would vary, okay? According to, once again, their resistance, different current. So take it as this. If you have a bigger pipe and a smaller pipe and you've connected all of them together at the same entrance or at the same point in a water flow, okay? You realize that the bigger pipe is going to, the bigger pipe is going to allow more current to flow through it, okay? But the smaller pipe will allow little amount of current to flow through it. Let me watch will allow a little amount of current to flow through it, okay? So that's the same concept when it comes to paralleling two resistors. You divide the current among them. So in terms of potential division, okay, this is how it looks like. So if I have, let's say, a V in, and I have two resistors, R1, R2, and I apply, the, the voltage at this junction called V out will be governed by this particular equation, okay? R2, which is the resistor that at the, at the bottom, divided by the sum of resistors. Now, if you check this well, you realize that the only thing we are doing here is ratio. Is that okay? So this gives us a ratio of this R2, which is the determining factor for this voltage. This ratio over the total resistance in the circuit times the, 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 the total supply, the total voltage, the, the, the supply's voltage. That is how you get the value of what? R, R out, okay? So as an example, let's say our V in is 12 volts and R1 is uh, 6, 6 uh, 10K, R2 is also 10K. Then the ratio is going to be 10K divided by 10 plus 10. So 10K divided by 20K, which will give us half, okay? Now V in is 12, so half of a 12 would give us six. That means you are going to get a voltage of six at this point, okay? And you realize that in this case, the 12 volt has been divided equally because the resistances are what? Equal. Is that okay? Now, the way you create potential dividers with two resistors, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this. In each of this scenario, we have potential division among, uh, across, we have potential division, sorry. All right, so any questions on this before I continue? Any questions on this? Uh, I think I had a chat uh, text. We are seeing your face. So, uh, are you trying to say you are not seeing my face or you are seeing my face? Please, do you see the PowerPoint? Hello, are you guys seeing the PowerPoint? Yeah, hello. I, um, I'm not seeing the PowerPoint. Oh, really? But I can see it here. I don't know about it. Yeah, I can see it. Yes, I can actually also see it here. I can also see it. Okay, so thank you very much. So the one getting that problem, please check it, okay? Thank you. All right. So any questions on this before, before we continue? The voted division. I mean, uh, I plan to do uh, some weekend training, some weekend tutorials uh, to be open for anyone who wants to join. It is mostly going to be on Saturdays. Maybe I'll start in January, okay, where I would actually go into details some of this concept that we are looking here, okay? I'll, when, for, for instance, if I take capacitance, I'm going to talk about them, complete a complete tutorial on, on capacitors, both theoretical and practical, okay? So this one is just to give you an idea, and especially the beginner is supposed to give you a clear idea of what we are trying to do here. So if you have any questions, please. Okay. So if no question, then let's continue. 
There's no question, let's continue. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, so when we connect resistors in parallel, usually what happens is that, I, I even just said that the total current is splitted, okay, between the, the resistors and the splitting is according to their resistances. Both voltage division and current splitting are, uh, depend strongly on the resistances, okay, the value of the resistances, okay? So this is a typical, typically when you are, you, you are splitting, this is something that, this is what will happen. Okay, so this is a parallel connection of two resistors. If you look at the previous one, see, this is what we call a series arrangement. So one here, one there, like that. This is called series. And in series, one of the characteristics of a series arrangement is that the same current is going to flow through them, okay? The current that will get into R1 is the same that will get into R2. Is that okay? No matter what, no matter the size of R1, whatever flows into it, that's the same thing that will flow into R2. Okay. So in series arrangement, resistance is actually split, uh, voltage is actually split, but current remains constant. Okay. And then when it comes to what for parallel arrangement. If you, you can see that over here we have the same voltage across the two is that okay so for parallel arrangement the voltage across them will stay constant however when the resist uh, the current gets in here according to their resistances different amount of current will flow and the way you calculate for that is by using this particular relations here okay so if i is the total current coming through then again you see that we have a ratio factor over here okay so for r2 we have r2 over r1 plus r2 which is r2 over the total and here for r1 we have r1 over the total so it's all about ratio and proportion both voltage division and current division okay yeah so any questions any questions uh, any questions any questions I thought somebody entered. Okay. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. Let's continue. Now, resistors and any other resistive component. Okay. By saying other resistive component, I mean components that behave like a resistor. That means they dissipate energy just like resistors and. Uh, there is a linear relation between their voltage and current uh, current consumption okay something like an incandescent bulb not the one powered by ac but the one that we power by dc okay all these are uh, resistive elements and any resistive element obeys something called the ohm's law okay obeys ohm's law uh, who, who remember who remembers the statement of ohm's law can it do, does anyone remember the statement of Ohm's law? How, how do we state it? How do, how do we state Ohm's law? Yeah, Kojo, Kojo yes, if you remember, let, let's hear from you. And the, Ohm's law, the Ohm's law states that the current across the resistor is equal to the current flowing through the circuit. Uh, can you take it again? The Ohm's law states that the current Across the resistor is equal to the current flowing through the circuit. Okay, well, we will have to correct that. Okay, I don't know if it is just an omission, but we have to correct that. Yeah, uh, Hassan, yes, Hassan. Uh, is it Nat, Nat is speaking, right? Nat, are you the one speaking? It seems someone, someone is speaking already. Why is that? Yes. Okay. Hassan. Hassan. Yes. You raised up your hand. Yeah. Okay. So I said he says that in a conducting material or in a metallic conductor. I I really can't I really can't hear you well. Yeah. Can you take it again? 
Okay, Nat, Nat, try it. Let's see. We'll, we'll get back to Asad. Okay, so Ohm's law states that at a constant temperature, the mm -hmm. current passing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its end. Fantastic. That is so cool. Any other, any other, I mean, it's a, it's a statement. You could also put it in any other way. Yeah. Uh, Hassan wanted to try. I don't know if he still wants to. Okay. Uh, Abdul Basit. Yeah. Please give it a try. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay. So that is the statement. But now the question is, how do you understand it? Can you, can somebody use any practical means maybe to, to explain it? I mean, it's easy to keep the statement in your head, but practically, do, do you, can, do you understand it? If you have a circuit, do you know when to apply Ohm's law? Yes. Yeah, Hassan. Yeah, Hassan, you can you can speak. Okay, can you speak clearly now? Come again. Okay, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, so let's take for instance, we have a circuit whereby we have an LED. So mm -hmm. we want to light up an LED. Yeah. And we also have a battery. So mm -hmm. let's say, for instance, T volt battery, we intend to light up an LED, and we all know that definitely it is not advisable to like power the LED directly on a battery. So because those LED, they are you know, their currents are usually like very low, so it is preferable for us to like use a resistor. So and using a resistor in this case, okay, okay, problem, let me not think to that aspect. I think okay. I'm going too far. Okay, so like in a less as we have a lamp and we have a resistor in the mm -hmm. circuit and we have a constant uh, battery. So if we should vary the okay, let let's if the resistor is constant. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, um, I, okay. Yeah, feel free, feel free. Feel, for me, I'm following. Yeah, yeah. I'm following. Uh -huh. okay. okay, so let's say we have a circuit, say we have a lamp and we have a resistor. And also, we have a battery. And if we should vary the 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 value of the resistor, let's say probably we should increase the resistor. It will definitely would reduce the flow of current. Mm -hmm. And also, if we should fist, if the resistor is resistance is fixed, resistance of the resistor is fixed, and probably we increase the voltage of that particular battery. So the current we also increase. That is that that directly proportional. So increasing voltage will bring about increase in the current if we should have a constant resistance. So that is what. Okay. Okay. That, that is great. That is great. Any other? Any other? Any? How do you understand the, the concept of Ohm's law? Yes. Any other? Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. Um. Please. My my contribution is that. When we take it practically, it's like a pipe, mm -hmm. which water is flowing through. Okay. Like when there is no obstacle in the in the pipe, like maybe some dirt or anything. Mm -hmm. When there is no obstacle in it, the amount of power that the water that is flowing from the source should be the same as the uh, amount of water that is coming out from the pipe. Mm -hmm. So, so in the, in that case, the obstacle. Here that we are talking about will be the resistance. The resistance, and, okay. Uh -huh. So, and the source will be the booty. So, um, when there is no obstacle, the water that is coming out from the source of the mm -hmm. water will be the same as the water that is flowing out from the pipe. Like, okay, my practice. Okay, idea. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Hello, any, any other? Yeah, Ephraim. Hello. Yeah, Ephraim. Yeah, it's like let's say let's say using a fan regulator. Okay. To maybe uh, to control the, the the fan speed. So you can regulate the, the speed of fans in our houses. So by controlling the resistance through the regulator, the current flowing through the fan is also um, managed. So like mm -hmm. this is like an example of Ohm's law to me. 
Okay, 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 fantastic. Yeah, so I, in fact, I'm enjoying this. I, I didn't anticipate this, but I, I think I'm, I'm loving this. Okay, yeah, any, any other tick? Uh, Nat, yes, Nat, let's hear from you. Oh, you already talk. Christine, okay, Nat, take it. Okay, Nat is out, I think. Uh, Christine, yeah. How do you understand no, Ohm's to... law? Yeah. I wanted to say the same point as the one who was explaining about the water in the pipe. Oh, okay. The more the flow of water, the more the pressure. Okay. Okay. And the bigger the pipe. That's great. Any other? Any other? Uh, Adam. Adam, yes. Yeah, I also want to add. Uh, okay. To say that at constant pressure, the current mm -hmm. flows remains the same. At come again. Constant pressure. So here, pressure will I mean, be the voltage, voltage, right? Voltage, yes. Uh -huh. And then the push out, the current mm -hmm. flowing remains the same. Okay. 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 Wow. That, that's cool. That's cool. Any, any other? Any other? Any other before uh, I, I chip in? I, I've really enjoyed the submissions. Yeah. Any other? How do you understand Ohm's law? Yeah. We, we, we usually... Yeah, Ohm's the, the potential difference across blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but how do you understand it? Because when you understand these laws, okay, knowing them is not the same as understanding them. Okay, you could be familiar with Ohm's law, it may cause to I out, but what does it really mean? Okay, what does it really mean? Okay, uh, let me see. Let me see if I could. Do some uh, demonstration with circuits. Uh, if I can do this simulation, uh, circuits uh, simulator online circuits. I haven't used this. But let, let's give it a shot. We're going to see if I could use it to explain something. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so I'm, 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 I'm asking for your input. How do you, okay, so somebody is saying that, is it advisable to use resistor and voltage regulator? Uh, let me, let me, I think yesterday I talked about that. This, is it advisable to use the resistor as a voltage regulator? No. And I'll explain why, okay? Don't, don't use it. Now, depending on, depending on, say, in some applications, yes, you may be able to, but generally, not because you don't get the ability that you want. Okay, let's hope this thing works and uh, I can use it to explain some things. Else, I may have to resort to paper. I'm not sure if I have a simulator, but it's not something I've used. So. Oh, come on. Okay. Probably I just have to resort to. Uh, okay. Okay. So let me just do something real quick. I, I want to do do something real quick. Show you, explain this whole thing in Ohm's law, and then at my tablet. Yeah, so if you don't have a contribution to this, we will be glad to listen. Ohm's law, how do you understand it? Yes, you can quote it, you can speak it, but what I'm um, actually asking the question we are, uh, we are asking right now. Your understanding of Ohm's law. Okay? How do you understand Ohm's law? I'm trying to do some setup. Okay. Yeah, I can I can write now. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, do, I'm going to <coughs> switch screen. Uh, where is my monitor? Yeah, this is taken from the YouTube server for the disturbance in the field. I just want to say something real quick. And then uh, let me move this here. Probably stop sharing. Okay, and now share this three. Okay. So let me open this. Oh, let me just use key card. I wanted to use the relation that none of my simulators are installed. Cool. Okay. So, on slow, right? How do you understand it? I'm going to try and explain something. Now, all of you did it well, you, 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 you did it, what you did was actually right. I still just want to add up a little to it. Okay. I want to add a little to it. I can actually use this. I just want to add just something tiny to it. Because the moment you get this kind of understanding, you really, you really appreciate it when you are doing it. Uh, can you all see the paint up? Can you all see the paint up? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So, my first question. Somebody is swimming with LEDs and resistors, okay? And that actually drew my attention to something. Let's say I have a voltage source, which is two volts, okay? And uh, I want to power up an LED, let's say a red LED, okay? Now, red LEDs are actually, they actually take about two volts, okay? And ideally, they, you should run a current of about 20 milliamps through them. That, okay? I think this would have been very nice using uh, Okay, now, if I have this, my question is, do I still need a resistor in this? Do I still need to connect it? So let's say, can I just hook this up like that, then to ground, right? Without a resistor. Can I do this? Uh -huh. Come on, share, 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 your, share your view. Can I do this? So I have two volts power source, right? It could be a battery that is two volts. And I want to power an LED. This LED is red, and red LEDs usually take two volts, right? So my question is, do I have to connect a resistor in this circuit? All right, Lyrical, yes, let's hear from you. Thank you very much, sir. So, um, with this type of circuit, I think connecting a resistor will not be necessary. Because Why? once a resistor is connected, there will be a good drop of resistor. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm, Hello. I'm listening. I'm trying to adjust the feed for the online people. Yeah, continue. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Uh, are you done? Are you done? Uh, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I think that... Um, before uh, you consider co connecting a, a resistor to the LED, mm -hmm. you must also check the the current rating of the of the voltage source. So the current check, rating um, of the voltage source. Okay, so let me add this. You see, let's assume that this voltage source can produce an infinite amount of current. Is that okay for you? So yes, the voltage source is capable of driving any amount of current that you want. Okay. Do I need a resistor? Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, Nikat. Nikat, you can chip in. Yes, because I'm listening. Considering the, the, the voltage. Uh, Lerica, continue. I, I'm not hearing you. Hello? Yeah, Nikat, yes. Hello? Yeah, Nikat, go on. I think I think yeah. there is no need yes. to any uh, yeah. register. Uh, I was saying that. Okay, so Nikat said there, there is no need to Hello, please, uh, let, let's be aware when somebody is speaking, okay? So Nikat said that there is no need to add a resistor. That is good. Yeah, Lerica, what do you also say? Yeah, or any other, any other. Do you think we need a resistor or not? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Um, sir, you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, I was saying that we don't need a resistor because we we'll create a voltage drop which might not be able to power our LED here. Okay. 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 Good. Uh, Elijah, yes. Elijah, what's, what's your take on this? Uh, hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please, I think we need uh, a resistor because you have to know the current coming from the source. So that if the current coming from the source exceeds uh, the specification of the LED, then mm -hmm. use a resistor to limit it a bit. Okay. So that at least you can be able to power the LED. Thank you very much. You just you just made a point on what I, the reason I wanted to do this. Okay. Thank you very much. You see, let's let's go back to Ohm's law. Uh -huh. Can somebody repeat the statement for me again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the voltage is the proportional to current when the resistor is constant. Okay. So mathematically, we express Ohm's law as what? The voltage drop, the current, right, and the resistance, right? Okay. So when we take any conductor or any element. We can assume this unless it is a variable and we can assume this to be what constant okay and this is actually a property of the material itself do you do you, do you understand that you see one one mistake or i won't say mistake one uh misunderstanding i see a lot of people get about power sources is that uh, most people think okay uh current would be this is like the same way i can put voltage across something uh, current can force its way through something no now please take this from me this power source here this too good even if it could generate an infinite amount of current that current will only come when it is requested take note of this Current is a reaction, okay? Current only comes or moves when there is voltage, okay? Now, if that is the situation, look at this. If this material is rated 2 volts, what it means is that if I connect these two volts across this, it is by default going to request for the current it needs and not more than that why because now unfortunately this is an led it is it is a linear device right so let me just use something that is a linear uh, uh, an ohmic device so let's say instead of led i'm using a lamp okay i'm using some uh dc lamp come on okay so instead of an led just just to make my my point okay just to make my point so instead of an led let me put a lamp here uh hey wow <laughs> okay how do i change this okay yep 
So instead of an LED, let me put a lamp here, right? You see, if this lamp is rated 2 volts and let's say 20 milliamps, if I connect 2 volts power source, which even has an infinite amount of current, it is just the 20 milliamps that will flow. Take note of that, okay? Current doesn't force itself through a circuit. Current only moves at the command of voltage. Please, are, are, are you following? Current will only move at the command of what voltage. Good. Now, uh, I have to... Okay, good. Okay, so look at this. In a situation where, let's say, now I have this voltage is 3. Now I change this to 3 volts, right? And this lamp is still 2 volts. In this case, it is like I am putting too much pressure on the lamp. And this pressure, is it because this pressure is so much, it is going to also force so much current to go through. So here we are going to get excess current flowing because of the excess voltage. Okay? But so far as we match voltages, we don't have to worry about current. So when I'm actually designing things, I... I don't actually even worry about current because the, the point is that if you set the right voltages where they have to be, current would follow and obey the laws. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, so if a device is rated, let's say, 5 volts, 1 amp, if I provide it with a 5 volt source, okay, a 5 volt source. And even if this 5 volt source has, can deliver 1,000 amps of current, this device is still going to pull just one amp. Only one amp of current is going to flow. Why? Because that means that the resistance of the device is enough to check how much current that will flow. Okay, so understand this. Things. So if it is an LED, okay, if it is an LED, if the voltage matches, you actually don't need an external. So if it is, let's say, red and I have two volts in, I have two volts as my source, I actually don't need uh, uh, an external resistor. You can try it. If you have kits, you can try it. Just if you have a bench power supply, set it to two volts and connect a red LED and see. If your, your bench power supply is not 40 and its readings are accurate, the LED should do fine. Okay. However, the problem with LEDs is that the manufacturers actually don't get the variations very well. Is that okay? You can actually buy the same set of LEDs from a manufacturer and they will have the same different brightness. Okay. Now, even with LEDs, because LEDs are diodes, this is what I've witnessed. This is what happens when you connect them in series. Okay. So I can still put a resistor here on the LED. Okay. So let's say I have two volts. You can try this out. Now, what will happen is that if this were to be, if the LED were to be a linear device, like a light bulb, uh, a DC light bulb or something, which is a linear device. So let me draw that one also here. Two volts, and I have a resistor, and I have a linear uh, incandescent light light bulb over here, right? For this situation, because both of these guys are resistive, the voltage drop across here would, would divide, will undergo division. Okay, the voltage drop across this point will undergo division. But if you observe for an LED, you realize that the voltage drop across the LED would always be high, will always be higher. In fact, when I did the experiment, as I kept increasing the voltage, initially, the voltage was only increasing across the LED until the LED opened, remember, it is a valve, right? Until it opened enough for current to flow. So as the current began flowing, Ohm's law says that the voltage drop is a reaction, it's a product of the current flowing and the resistance. So until this LED actually opens up, and the LED will only open when it gets the right, it overcomes its forward voltage drop, okay? So until the... Uh, LED overcomes it forward voltage drop. Current is not going to flow. And so when you check this, you realize that if there is any voltage buildup, it will be building across the LED, not across this. 
So after this LED has opened up and is now conducting, any excess voltage now begins to uh, speedily increase across the resistor instead. Okay, so that is the reason we call these things protective resistors. Now, if you want to confirm what I'm talking about, you, if you know how to use any simulator, you can try it. Okay, just put a voltmeter across an LED and a voltmeter across a resistor, like in this series, right? And then vary, vary your voltage and look at, check how the voltages split across them. Now you do the same for a lamp and then uh, a resistor. Now you realize that because these are resistive elements, right from the word go, they begin dividing the voltage among them according to their resistance. Okay, so please understand these things when, when, when you talk about them. Okay, if the voltage matches, I don't need resistor. So one way you could think about this is that, one way you could think about this is that the reason you need the reason you need a, a resistor is to cater for excess voltage. Think about it that way. If you have any circuit, right, that you are supposed to power with a battery, the reason you need a resistor is to cater for excess voltage. So let's say if my volt here is five and I want to connect, let's say, a green LED, for instance, okay? A green LED, let me admit this one, a green LED would usually work from uh, 2.8 volts to about 3.2 volts, okay? So let's say we target at 3 volts. That means that I have to deal with this extra 2 volts here. That means I will need a resistor to drop this extra 2 volts. Is that okay? So the next thing I have to think about is, how much current do I want to power the LED with? So let's say if I choose 10 milliamps, then it means that this resistor also has to allow 10 milliamps of, uh, of current, sorry, to flow through it. Is that okay? So think about it this way. Anytime you need a resistor in such a configuration, you only need the resistor to deal with the excess voltage. Always think about it that way. So if you don't have any excess voltage, then you don't need any excess, uh, any, any resistor to deal with it. Okay, good. But like I said, for LEDs, you can actually put this there and it will still turn on, just that it will affect the brightness a little bit. Okay, but you don't always need resistors. So far as voltage is matching. Please, any questions before we continue? Yes, and somebody also asked, is it advisable to use LED uh, resistors as uh, voltage regulators? Let me just try and uh, go uh, talk about that briefly, okay? Uh, where is my mouse? Okay, so let me first get rid of this. Okay, so the answer to that question, in fact, I'll go for a strong no because you said voltage regulation, so I'll say no. Why? Yes, I can divide a voltage with, uh, with resistors, okay? We know that, so if let's say I have, sorry, if let's say I have 12 volts over here and then I want, let's say, 9 volts out of it, right? I could actually, I could actually do a series arrangement like this and then tap voltage from here. So the idea is that I need 9 volts from here. Is that okay? All right, this is possible, okay? So uh, let us work out the values of the resistors. If we want 9 volts here, we can do a lot of resistor configurations that will give us 9 volts over here. Okay, now since we have uh, 9 over 12, that will give us, so 3 will go here uh, 3 times and go here 4 times, okay? So we need to select 2 resistors such that uh, I think we should have this ratio, the, the, let's call this R2, let's call this R1, so that the ratio of R2 to the total resistance is, is, is 3 is to 4. Okay? We can select so many different resistors, resistor values to achieve this. 
But you see, what actually matters is how much current are you going to draw from this junction, from this uh, divider, okay? Because we are using resistors, the moment, let's say in, uh, in the beginning we create and we know we can steadily say that, okay, the current requirement is going to be 100 milliamps, right? Yes, we can use this. So I could say that, okay, if I need 100 milliamps through here, then um, I'm going to choose this resistor so that it can pass, let's say, 101 milli milliamps, okay? So I'll use, I'll let one milliamp draw a drive to ground to keep, to stabilize this. And I'm going to draw uh, the 100 milliamps through here, okay? So we can use this calculation to actually choose values. If we want, we can do it. Okay, let's do it probably. So if I want to do this, uh, so that means this R1 here has to drop three volts, okay? So uh, V equals to IR, so we need to know the value of the resistance. Now, if we make R the subject, we get V over what? Over I, is that okay? So we need it to drop a voltage of three volts, and we need it to pass. Since the current is coming from here, all the current has to pass through. So at a current of uh, 101 milliamps, okay? Somebody should quickly compute this for me. Three divided by 101. Now, there is a textbook way of doing this, okay? There is a textbook way of doing this, but I like to do it uh, intuitively. That's why I'm, I'm showing you that way. Yeah, a uh, question. Uh -huh. what, what did you get? 0 0.0297. So convert, convert 0 0.0297. So it's in milli. So if you convert it to a normal value, what would that be? 0. Point, so okay, it said 0 0.0297, right? Right? Yes. Is, okay, so that means 29. That's about 29 ohms, two of us. So if we divide by, if we divide by 1,000, because this is milli, this is milli. So milli will go up and become a K. Okay, so that means, sorry, that means you have to multiply by 1,000, not divide by 1,000. So if we multiply 1, 2, 3, so that will give us 29 ohms, okay? So it means that we have to choose an R1 of 29 ohms. And again, we, uh, we have to also consider the power rating of the resistor. But for now, let's ignore that. Now, you see, when this current gets here, I only want one milliamps to go through this and the rest to go to power whatever we have connected it, okay? So the trick here is, I just have to consider this one milliamp and the voltage I need it to drop. So R2 can be calculated as <laughs> nine volts, which is the voltage we want across it, and then uh, the current that we want to flow, which will be one milliamp, and this should be something, I think, 9K. 9 kilo ohm. Now, intuitively, if you understand ketchup soil, you know that this is going to happen. Okay? So if I create this circuit, this is going to allow 100 milliamps to go through. And you see, so far as I am pulling exactly 100 milliamps, everything will be okay. But the moment I pull less or more, then this voltage is going to change. Okay, but when we are doing voltage regulation, for instance, when we use an IC like LM7805, it promises a constant 5 volt output irrespective of whatever we are drawing. I mean, so far as we are drawing current within the range it offers, okay, and we are supplying voltage within the range that it offers. But you realize that this is not robust for uh for in the, when when you use uh, poten uh, potential divider again when assuming this is pa battery powered as we are using the system the system's voltage is going to change and any change here is again going to change our output okay so if you want a very reliable voltage regulation please don't use this but of course if you are just using it for maybe splitting, sensing, and those kind of stuff, then you can use it as a potential divider. I don't know if that answers the one who asked this question. Please, any questions on this? Uh, we have just a few minutes to end this session. 
Any questions on this? And let me also clarify again. There is something called the Thevenin theorem, okay? In the textbooks, that's how you would actually deal with this. But this is also an intuitive way to go about this. Work. And it, it works. If you use the Thevenin theorem for this, you are going to get the same result, okay? Just that the Thevenin theorem is a more formalized way of doing these things. Okay, please, any questions? Oh, I have confused you. <laughs> any questions? Any questions? Let's talk about this. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Okay, I'll take that as no questions and let's proceed, okay? So when you learn these things, please, don't just learn them for learning's sake, okay? Try to understand where the reason uh, we, 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 we talk about them and all those kind of stuff. Try to, try to get the whole thing, okay? Huh. And it, it was good people were able to uh, people were able to, I mean, explain in their own ways and in their own way what they think uh, that, that Ohm's law is about. In fact, I think I, I like that. I like that. So keep keep that up, okay? Keep that up. Always try. Get more understanding, okay? Don't just take the textbook for, for what it is. Try understanding it. Mm? There is always uh, a deeper understanding if you search for it and you can always get it, okay? All right, please, any, any, any more questions? Any questions? Uh, continue. So let's quickly finish up our PowerPoint. Let's quickly finish up our PowerPoint. Please, uh, those uh, on, ca can you see my, okay, let me stop sharing and share again. Okay, so welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. I believe things are clearer. Please, if you are still having some confusion, let, let me know, okay, so that I explain to you. But understanding this thing is very important. It makes the whole circuit design process simpler because, okay, so take note. When you are dealing with circuits, just concentrate, most of the time, just concentrate on get, getting the right level of voltages to where they have to be, okay? Current to always follow. Hmm? Don't worry about it. current won't rush itself. Current will only obey the command of voltage and react accordingly based on the, the resistance of whatever material it is flowing through. Okay, so take note of that. If my voltage matches my requirements, there is no need for a resistor. Always think of resistors as using it to deal with the excess voltage, at least in this particular context. Okay, all right, so let's continue. <laughs> So the mathematical statement of Ohm's law is this, okay? So the voltage drop, and please take note that the voltage drop that we are talking about here has to be what is dropping across just that component, okay? Just that component, okay? So if it is a resistor, just that resistor, no other resistor is included, is that okay? So the, the voltage drop is always proportional to the current and the resistance of that material. Now, take note that this is a statement of linearity, I think, yes, it's a statement of linearity. And if you plot a graph for this, you're going to get a, a, a graph of voltage against uh, current, you're going to get a straight line because it's a linear statement. And this does not apply to things like, uh, things like, uh, sorry, what do you call it? Diodes, okay? Diode is a nonlinear device. Uh, you can read more on it. Uh, I don't want to. <laughs> go into further theory 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 stuff <laughs> okay so we can also express this as v equals to i r so that is the mathematical statement for ohm's law is that okay now usually uh, if you are part of any electronic community you would hear uh, resistors uh, being described in uh, so many different ways okay and uh, usually the way you hear or the adjective that a resistor assumes uh, depends on the way it has been used in a circuit. Usually depends on uh, the way it has been used in a circuit. Just a moment. Let me switch on the camera. Okay. Depends on the way it has been used in a circuit. Okay. So let's look at some of the various ways we use resistors in a circuit. Uh, <laughs>
Okay, so let me just skip to this. So when you hear of a potential divider, this should be able to create a mental picture of uh, two resistors in series. Is that okay? So as an engineer, if you hear something like, oh, a potential divider, you should immediately have resistors in series in your mind. Is that okay? We tap in and uh, voltage from between them. Then if you also hear of something like a shunt resistor, sometimes you hear of, oh, putting a shunt resistor. When we use shunt, a shunt resistor is basically a resistor that has a very low resistance. Usually we use them for current sensing. Okay, so when you hear of that, if you tell any electronics engineer shunt resistor, it immediately gives them a clue about what that is. Okay. Then sometimes you hear of pull-up resistor. Usually when you are dealing with microcontrollers, pull-up resistor. A pull-up resistor is just a resistor that has been tied to a signal line that, uh, that is connecting a signal line to a higher voltage source, usually 5 volts or 3 volts, okay, depending on the technology. Okay? So something like this is what we call a pull-up resistor. So if you ever call me and be like, oh, prof, I placed a pull-up resistor on pin 5, immediately I will understand what that means. Okay? Then when we use the resistor to connect the signal to the ground or the pin to the ground, we call it a pull-down resistor. And usually you also hear of current limiting or protective resistors. Uh, that is usually used in things like when you want to connect an LED to a power source and all that. Okay. So these are various ways that uh, you could hear people talk re about resistors in special cases. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing I want us to look at is... Uh, is the fact that resistors yesterday when we talked about capacitor we, we realized that capacitors could have a fixed value or a variable value right now the same thing applies to resistors resistors could actually have a fixed value so for instance there could be a resistor that is rated 10k 100k 1 meg and so on and this value in uh in uh, normal circumstances let me put it that way would remain the same it won't change is that okay now emphasis on normal circumstances because resistance is actually affected by temperature too okay but we won't go there right now but in normal circumstances if a resistor is rated let's say 10k it has to remain what 10k is that okay however resistances can also be variable is that okay they can be variable and usually we use this variable resistance in operations where we would want to interact with our circuit during uh, when it's being used is that okay now in terms of how we can uh, vary the resistances there are so many ways we can do it by mechanical means we can do it we can vary the resistance by electrical means now take note if a variable resistor can be adjusted by mechanical means that means it has been designed to be adjusted by mechanical means if it is adjustable by mechanical means you cannot adjust it by uh, electrical means Take note of that, okay? So there are also digital potentiometers. Uh, sorry, we can vary them by electrical means. Uh, we can vary some by changes in temperature. Some can be varied by changes in light intensity, okay? Now, there is a special one called, there are some special resistors I'm going to talk briefly about. Then the first one is uh, an LDR, what we call the light dependent resistor, okay? Now, this is a type of resistor whose resistance can be varied by changing the light intensity. Okay, so usually we see them in uh, photosensing applications. Okay, so in case you haven't seen one before, that is it. So I can use, uh, for instance, if I have an outside light, you know, we, we need outside light work during the night. Is that okay? So assuming uh, I, am, I, I am a night worker, usually, or usually I don't close early, so maybe even as at 8 p.m., I'm not in my house. That means that I can do two things. Wait till I come to the house before I turn on my light. Or once, uh, once I'm leaving the house in the morning, I could switch on my light and it will remain on till the night, right? But I realize that if you do that, one, you are incurring more costs and you are not doing your country any good, right? So it's not something you should do. So one way you could solve this is by using a, an LDR, creating a circuit with LDR to detect the day and night, and you can use it to switch on or off your lights appropriately, okay? So 
Just, that's one of the applications of an LDR. There is also a type of resistor called a thermistor whose resistance vary with temperature, okay? So when you bring, you change the temperature of their environment, their resistance also what changes, okay? So the, term, the word thermistor is actually derived from thermal and resistor. So it's a, a combination of that. These are examples of thermistors. So they are usually seen in heat sensing applications, okay? So definitely your rice cooker should have something like that, or it's, yes, your rice cooker should have something like that. I don't know if rice cookers actually use thermistors, so they use like ordinary thermostat or something like that, okay? But if you have any heat sensing applications, chances are that you can use one of these thermistors to uh, handle it, okay? So there are special types of resistors. Then we also have what we call the potentiometers. Now, these are devices that are by default created to serve as voltage dividers. That's what we call potentiometers. But voltage dividers are also called potential dividers, okay? Now, these potentiometers by default or generally would have at least three terminals, okay? Now, what we do with them is, okay, so these are examples of them, okay? So we have several potentiometers, sliders, okay? Any of them, so they are all potentiometers, okay? They, they are used to create voltage divide. They divide voltage, okay? <laughs> now, internally, this is how they look like. So if you take something like uh, this one, there is this uh, area of uh, resistive material, and uh, we have connector one and two connected at the ends of this resistive material. Now, remember in the beginning, I said that if I take any material, let's say copper, and I take the two pieces of copper wire, same cross-sectional uh, cross area, but I vary, let's say, the length, that is going to lead to differences in resistance, okay? so. This is engineered such that this resistance, the full, if I move from here to here, I would get a, a specific resistance, okay? And there is a middle uh, a pin which is connected to something we call the wiper that can actually slide over this material. So if, let's say, I'm measuring between this point and that point, then as I vary the wiper over this uh, resisting material, I would in effect be varying the resistance, the, the total resistance of the of the of the device. Is that okay? So that also means that if I connect this to this pin one to five volts and pin two to ground, then depending on the position of the wiper, I have what we call a potential divider or a voltage divider. Is that okay? good but then you could actually add, uh, configure this in another way to form a variable resistor so take note by default they are potential dividers that's why we call them potentiometers okay but i could configure them in some way to serve as a variable resistor or a real start okay so another name for variable resistor is a real start okay so look at this configuration <laughs> if i connect five volts here to pin one, five volt to pin three, and the middle to as an output to anything. This is a potential divider configuration. Is that okay? But if I connect only two pins, pin one and the wiper, so if any the wiper and any other pin, then I have created, I have connected it as a variable resistor. In this case, it's going to function as a variable resistor. Is that okay? So take note of that. It's going to function as a variable resistor. So these are the two ways you could configure uh, a, a, a manual potentiometer as a variable resistor. Okay, so let's continue. Now, we can actually also describe resistors in terms of the material that they are designed from, okay? So by so, we can have a category of resistors called the carbon film resistors. Uh, we have the metal film. Yeah, somebody, uh, Joel, you can ask your question. Please, uh, I'm quite confused about the variable and the potentiometer. Okay, so let me take, uh, you mean this, right? 
yeah, you were explaining um, the potentiometer and the variable, and I'm saying that I'm somewhat confused. I don't okay, so right. potentiometer, okay, is a different configuration that this particular thing we call pot can be used. Now, take note, when we are dealing with, when we are talking about potentiometer, here we are interested in voltage division, okay? We are interested in voltage division, not, uh, not uh, uh, what do we call it? resistance variation now remember when we looked at both uh, potential divided or voltage divided we said that the division of the voltage is as a result of the differences uh, the ratio of the resistances of the resistors used right and this material actually contains uh, a resistive material and as we are sliding over we are in effect just varying the voltages the the the, the voltage division, okay, the ratios of the bottom side and the upper side. Is that okay? So that results in different voltage. So let's say I connect five volts and ground here. That means that I can select from ground up to five volts. Okay, while well, by varying this particular point, I could select from ground up to five volts. Okay, but then again, there is a, 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 something wrong when you just do this because if you hook this up directly to ground okay if you connect this wire passage that is directly connected to ground then i think there is a possibility of short circuit okay but i'm going to that right now so if we do this configuration if we do this configuration here we are actually selecting the output here is going to be voltage selection we are not doing yes inherently we are doing uh, resistance variation but the main purpose of this configuration is for voltage var uh, selection. So I can adjust my voltage outputs on this between ground and five volts. Is it, is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. But then when we configure it like this, then it becomes a variable resistor. So take note that there is a difference between a variable resistor or a real start and a potentiometer. These are two different things. But over here, what I'm trying to tell you is that the same device which we call the pot can be configured depending on how we, we use it. It can serve as its default potentiometer or we could configure it and use it as a variable resistor. Okay, so there are two different things. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, I was talking about this. So depending on the material that we use to create that particular resistor okay uh we could have we could classify the resist, uh, resistors as carbon film resistors that means they are made from the carbon film material metal film resistors we could also have wire wound resistors we could have metal oxide resistors uh, metal strip and all that so all these just is because of the material they are created from is that okay so yeah if that is what you want to do okay now since we are engineers, one of the important things we need to know is what to consider when we are choosing resistors, okay? This is very important. The thing that we have to consider yesterday, we looked at that for capacitors, what to consider when you are choosing capacitors, what to consider when you are choosing diets, right? Today, we are going to look at what to consider when you are choosing resistors, okay? So basically, basically, and I know probably most of you do this, basically for simple applications, you just have to worry yourself about the resistance okay that's the value of the resistor the tolerance now the tolerance of a resistor is also the percentage error value uh, error in the in the value the stated value okay and for resistors you could get uh, i think i know of one percent tolerance that means that resistor if if it is one percent tolerance it only means that the value that you will measure if you use uh, an ohmmeter would be very close okay to the stated value you could also get five percent you could get ten percent and uh, you could get twenty percent okay these are the tolerances that i know okay so you you basically need to worry about the resistance the tolerance and the wattage and uh, for resistors wattage is about the size of the resistor okay the different so we could have let's say a 1k resistor at different wattages okay with the same 1k resistor we can get it at let's say 1.8 watts we can get it at half watt quarter watt 
one, what three, what in that order. Okay. So what would change is that a half watt one k resistor will be bigger than a one eighth watt one k resistor. A one watt one k resistor would be bigger than a one a, a half watt one uh, k resistor. Okay. So, but in terms of what it, that is it, and it is so because you know resistors primarily deals with the excess energy by dissipating the mass heat. So the bigger the resistor, the more surface area it has to cool down quickly or dissipate the energy. Okay, that is why they come in different sizes. So different sizes, but we can get the same value for almost the various sizes. Okay? So these are usually uh, the, the things, the parameters that you may consider when you are dealing with very simple applications. However, for some uh, sensitive applications, okay, you may have to consider more than that. You may have to consider, especially when you are dealing with higher frequency applications or automotive applications where temperature is an issue, then you may choose resistors based on more parameters than just what you have stated. Now, in this case, you may have to consider things like what we call the temperature coefficient, okay? Now, every resistor, let me say every material has a, there, there is a way temperature influences the nature of materials, okay? So uh, let me just, in order not to go into details, let me just say this. Resistance actually varies with temperature, okay? But it, it, there has to be a certain amount of temperature. Let me put it that way. So one of the, when I asked people to state about Ohm's law, somebody started, somebody said, at uh the, at the same temperature or something the, the person included temperature in his work and that was very beautiful okay so the, the the temperature of the resistor actually does affect the, the 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 resistor now generally for resistors when temperature is increasing the resistance will decrease that okay so if i let's say have a 1k resistor and this rating is probably at room temperature. That's about 25 degrees Celsius, right? If I should use this temperature and its temperature, uh, if it, sorry, if I should use this resistor and its temperature rises to, let's say, uh, 50 Celsius, there is going to be a decrease in the resistance. Is that okay? So that means that if the value of the resistor is supposed to be accurate, then changes in the temperature is going to cause your device to malfunction a bit. Is that okay? So depending if this is the situation, then you have to check that the resistor that you are choosing has a good temperature coefficient. Okay. So this is also one of the reasons why we have different materials being used for a resistor. So we just saw that some resistors are wire wound, carbon film, metal film, and all that. All these materials have different properties that make them ideal for certain situations, okay? The next thing is the aging and stability. Of course, electronic components, as you are using them, they age and they begin to mount, uh, their properties or qualities begin to drop. Is that okay? So depending on your application, you may also have to consider the aging and stability of the resistor. And this is the point where you have to probably get in touch with your manufacturer or uh, data sheet and read more about it and manufacturers do do good job they usually have information about these things in their data sheets another thing is thermal resistance okay thermal resistance for instance uh, if you look at shunt resistors you read you mostly see that they are they are they are the cement type what we call the power resistors okay so the material that you are using you have to ensure that the material can withstand the heat or the energy the resistor is supposed to what, dissipate. Okay, you can't just go about choosing any material. So if you look at the various types of uh, resistors we have, if you take a shunt resistor, for instance, because of its ability to dissipate a lot of energy, they use a special type of uh, uh, material to create it, okay? I don't have one with me, I'll have shown you, but you can check for power resistors online. You realize that they have different materials, okay? And these are some of the things you have to consider. So the thermal resistance, okay, because it is dissipating the excess energy as heat. So it should be able to withstand that amount of heat, okay? So 
in certain applications, you may have to consider these properties of resistance. Another thing that you may have to look at is its immunity to noise, okay? Noise. And this particular point comes in handy when you are dealing with uh, higher gain amplifiers, okay? Uh, because you usually bias your output and even your feedbacks, you use resistors for them. So if the kind, the type of resistor you are using, it's a chemistry is, uh, is unable to withstand noise, the noise from the env environment. And usually this could be mi minor, minor thermal fluctuations. Okay, we, we saw that uh, the temperature has effect on resistance. Okay, so if it is so sensitive to thermal fluctuations that you may not want to consider such resistors for uh, things like uh, feedback operations and amplifier gain operations, okay? And then finally, high frequency behavior, okay? When, whenever you are operating in the gigahertz region or very high, high frequency region, then the innate inductance of the material used for the, uh, the resistance becomes an issue. Now, this is, uh, no, this is not a concept I, can, I would want to talk about in here. Probably uh, I would have a session to talk about this kind of high frequency behavior of certain materials, okay? When we get to certain frequencies, which we usually classify as high frequency in electronics, like in the gigahertz, Trust me, the things you call capacitors, inductors, and uh, resistors, they tend to behave differently, okay? Now, that's a topic for another session. Now, I think that would be... Oh, okay, I think I, ha I still have more. Still have more. Oh, yeah, it was just a duplicated PowerPoint. All right, so that is the end for... Uh, the end of what I wanted to talk about. So we still have some time to kill. I would uh, use it to answer questions if there are any as we bring the second, as we bring this point to, uh, as we bring this session to an end. Yeah. So any questions, any questions, any questions, any suggestions from the senior members? Yeah. Please, let's discuss any questions. Any questions, please? Yeah, Anikat, yes. <coughs> Nikat, you can go, you can go ahead. If, uh, why are we are using a uh, uh, pull-up register and a pull-down register? Uh, come again, I didn't hear you well. Why we are used uh, pull up register and pull down register? Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, he's, he's asking that what, why do we use pull up or uh, when do we use pull up resistors and pull down resistors? Okay, so let me probably uh, go. I think, yeah, let me use the work the project we are doing as an example. There is an example in there, okay. <clears throat> So I'm quickly going to share the key card view. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Good. <laughs> Please, can you all see the key card? The key card view. Looks like it. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So Nikat, look at this. <laughs> For instance, eh? The, the re, uh, reset pin of the it, uh, at mega 328 microcontroller, okay? It has to be by default high. I mean, by default, it has to be connected to five volts. Do you get it? it do, do you get it? Yes. Good. Yes. So, for instance, if, look at something. When I want to... If I want to reset the microcontroller, then what I can do is press on this button, right? So for, for, yeah. for let me just delete this and connect this there, okay? So if I do this, this will work, okay? It will be connected to fiber, that's good. But when I want to reset this, I will have to press on this button, okay? When I press on this button, 
since this is ground it is going to link this point to ground okay that is what instructs the microcontroller to reset but the problem is that when i press this button i have actually short circuited the device do you realize that yeah. exactly so in order to avoid the short circuit i will put this here and so if i press this whilst i have this resistor here it limits how much current is going to flow and i still achieve oh okay 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 somebody said oh sorry 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 so so <laughs> The, I thought I was sharing the schematic, not knowing I wasn't. Sorry. Sorry. So probably let me take it again. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for drawing my attention. I, I hope. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. You see, over here, this RST pin, right? Pin one mm -hmm. is supposed to pull, is supposed to, by default, have a higher voltage. Is that okay? Which is, it's supposed to be connected to five volts in order to work because the moment it goes low in fact if you you try to start this at mega and this pin is low it will never turn on okay it will never turn on you can try it okay so in order to ensure that that doesn't happen by default we connect we we should connect this point to five volts like that is that okay so that when we want to reset it it's an active low signal. So when we reset, to reset, it means we have to put a low signal on the pin. And we can do that by pushing this reset button down. When we push it down, since this is ground, it will link this line, to the pin to ground, and it will reset, right? But the problem is that the moment we do that, we have also short-circuited our 5 volts line, right? Which is not a good thing. So to solve that, we will put in this 10K, so that when we press on this and this guy joins the ground, the current that will flow to the ground will be limited by this resistor. Okay, so this the, the pull-up resistor is supposed to ensure that this signal will by default be connected to what five volts. Okay, and you see the thing is because there is no this this uh RST pin is not actually sinking current, current is not flowing into it technically right the only way current will flow would be if we connect we press on this resistor and it connects to ground so so far as we have not pressed this pin the voltage here will be the same as the voltage here because remember ohm's law says that the potential difference across is proportional to the current so if there is no current right then we are not going the, the voltage that will be across here in fact the voltage that we measure at this point will be the same as the voltage that we are putting at the source okay but in the moment we press on this then current is going to flow and we are now going to have the five volt drop across this so without pressing if you try to measure voltage across this you get zero because this is going to be five volts this point is also going to be five volts you can try it out okay so that's the function of the pull up resistor now it becomes a pull down resistor if instead of connecting it to the five volt we connect it to ground so in that case we we will do that when we rather want the pin to be a default low not high is that okay so that is when we use the pull up and pull down resistor so the, the, it has become a common thing in the in the field such that anytime you talk about pull up resistor or pull down resistor any electro circuit designer actually understands what it is. I don't know if I have answered your question. Yep. Thank you. Very yeah, please, any other questions? We have just nine minutes to end this session. <laughs> any more questions, please? Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Yeah, uh, David, yeah, please, you can go ahead. David, I thought you wanted to ask a question. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, I'm asking already. Okay. I'm muted already. Sorry for that. Yeah, uh, my question is why designing a device for both temperate and like snowing region 
the, the other time we talk about changes in the resistance based on the temperature like that. So is there any means whereby we can design a device uh, uh, in choosing resistor, resistor that will work for both temperate region and a snowing region? So that's my question. Okay, okay, so you want, you are, you are, you are, uh, uh -huh, thank you. You are, you are asking that, is there any way you can design a device for any weather condition, right? Exactly, sir, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so you see, for resistors, you don't even have to worry about the, I don't know even if you have to worry about the cold regions, right? The problem would be with the, with the hot regions. Is that okay? So I think for resistors, then you just have to worry about, uh, in the in the hot regions probably you could isolate your circuit from the environment right by heat sinking and all those kind of stuff or if it is the resistor itself that is generating the heat then you should probably heat sink it applying heat sink and also choosing the right type of resistor would help it cool down faster is that okay and of course sometimes too you can employ some cooling mechanism is that okay so yeah, you could actually do that. But actually do that. Please, are you okay? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, please, yeah. any other questions? <laughs> any other questions? Can you, can you please share the schematic diagram? Uh, are you on the, the WhatsApp page? Are you on the WhatsApp page? I shared it there this morning. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, I. Uh, yes. So I shared an image of it. However, however, for the the actual files, I'll share them after the project. I want people to actually uh, design things for themselves. So I'll make the files available on our GitHub page. But for now, I will only be sharing the images. Okay, so that in case you want to follow, you can look on it and build for yourself too. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, any maybe one more question, then we are out of here. We are prepared for the second session. Okay, so in the second session, we are going to continue with uh, our board. We're going to assign footprints and then do probably, I think we will we also start with the component arrangement, but I'll initially talk about the component uh, packages, the package types. Okay, I, I'll talk about the package type before we start, uh, we start that. Okay, so if there is no more question, then I'll say thank you for joining this session. Um, I'm still inviting you to the next session. Don't miss it. And uh, let's meet in the next one or 30 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>